Hello and welcome to Africa Today. I am Mike Okwache. The unending story of Western isolation continues for Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe after he was recently left out of the first ever U.S.-Africa summit in Washington. Now, call it a case of the lonely uncle who never gets invited to gatherings, and you will be left with a picture of a 90-year-old raising his fist outside the building, claiming not to care. Meanwhile, the East continues to be home away from home for long-term Zimbabwean leader who recently renewed economic ties in China. How far will Robert Mugabe's recent visit to Beijing turn things around for Zimbabwe's ailing economy? You can share with us on Twitter at TVC Africa Today or send an email to Africa Today at tvcnews.tv. We'll take a report now in Africa Today. We'll be right back. Thanks for joining us. Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe recently met with Chinese Premier Li Keqiang during a visit to China, hoping the longtime ally and economic giant can help the African nation's ailing economy. Mugabe, who has been criticized by Western nations for human rights violations, had been welcomed a day before with a 21-gun salute. Before meeting with President Xi Jinping at the Great Hall of the People in Beijing, Xi and Mugabe oversaw the signing of a number of agreements on trade, tourism, emergency food donations, and concessional loans from China to the southern African nation. Zimbabwe, a once prosperous country of 13 million people, has struggled since 90-year-old Mugabe defeated rival Morgan Changirai in a 2013 election marked by allegations of irregularities. Mugabe's victory ended an uneasy power-sharing deal, but foreign investors have been deterred by concerns about corruption and government policies to force foreign and white-owned businesses to cede 51% of their shares to black Zimbabweans. Amina Hamid, Africa Today. According to official statistics, Zimbabwe was ranked top in terms of beneficiaries of Chinese investments among all African countries in 2013. But many say the economy is far from recovering with unemployment rates high at about 80%. Now, joining us on Africa Today, we have Samuel Lisa, an economist and an African affairs analyst. You're welcome to oh, Africa Today. Mike. It's good to see thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. And on Skype, we have Dr. Vanessa Iwewe Etemewe of the London School of Economics and Political Science in the United Kingdom. Vanessa, welcome to Africa Today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's all right. Now, let's, let's start from the studio. Robert Mugabe went to China hoping to turn things around. And he was expecting about $10 billion to be uh, given to him, as loan as the case may be. But his recent visit to China, how would you rate the success of it? Uh, thank you very much. You know, recently, Obama hosted uh, African leaders mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, the U.S. And uh, he left out Mugabe mm -hmm. and Blas Kapowri. Uh, because uh, these are sit tight leaders mm. who don't want to democratize and they don't want to leave. Mm. And uh, you know, America, uh, you know, tendency towards that, where you don't want to democratize, you don't want to lead, there's human rights, abuse, mm. so they left them out. Uh, the visit of Mugabe to China, this very one is a 13th visit. Mm. So it's not new, he's been going there. Uh, he considered himself as an ally of China. He looked at it as another option for him. But then, if you look at it, China's investment in Africa mm. as at 2012 is a whopping $198.5 billion. Okay. Zimbabwe got only how much? $602 million. That is less than 1%, precisely 0.3%. So, even the visit is not paying much. That is why the employment rate in Zimbabwe is still very high. Don't forget that Zimbabwe economy thrived on agriculture. Before he started driving away white farmers, mm. taking the land, you know, that was one of his strategies to, to, to keep himself in power. So if you go into China, are you begging cops in hands? And the, the employment rate in your country is very high. In terms of age, he's aged. He doesn't want to democratize. He doesn't want anybody to succeed him. He wants to remain there. And the West, 
They have treated him. They treated his regime as a pariah regime. They don't want to touch him. They don't want to have anything to do with him. China too is, you know, keeping him as a traditional partner. But they are not doing much to help the economy. So that is not the summary. But if we look, if we look back, Zimbabwe used to be a very prosperous country, very, very modest population, but really very prosperous. It was still uh, Mugabe that was on as president at that time, and yeah. he's still the one now. One would expect that he should have garnered some level of more experience, a robust experience over the years, but it seemed to be turning around and it's not working that way. What's, what's really wrong? You cannot discuss Zimbabwe economy without talking about the political situation. Okay. They are both married. Okay. Uh, there's no doubt, at exception, during independence, you know there are two parties that fought for independence, mm -hmm. the ZANU-PF, and uh, the other party. Okay. But Zimbabwe entrenched himself. Anyone that opposed him, you either run out of the country or you are dead. So, and don't forget the economy is agrarian, basically agrarian, mm -hmm. commercial farming okay. by these white farmers. So, Zimbabwe, uh, Mugabe, from election to election, he changes the constitution when he wants to. From election to election, he brings out new strategy. Mm -hmm. By the time he has finished all the other strategies, he now started the land policy. With the law policy, the downtrodden, they, they, they applauded him, not knowing that is on the, that is their undoing. They applauded him, said they should run after the white farmers, okay. take over the land. All right. And they cannot do the agriculture the white farmers are doing. So the economy started whittling. So that, it is true, there is this same Mugabe that, that uh, became president at exception. But he kept himself, perpetuated the power. And in order to do so, anything can go. It's only his personal interest that is after. All right, we'll, we'll come back to this. Now, joining us via Skype on Africa today, we have uh, Dr. Vanessa Iwewe-Etemewe. Uh, Dr. Vanessa, you're welcome to Africa today. Now, what do you make of Mugabe's style of leadership and his efforts at easing the suffering of the people in Zimbabwe? Let's start from there. Well, first and foremost, um, it's quite easy to look at it and say he's... There's really little or no leadership happening there. It's more or less like... like um, We've heard this evening, it's a pariah state, a pariah nation, and um, leadership uh, to a large extent has to do with influence. And um, a lot of what we see, looking on from this point, at the, happening in Zimbabwe, a lot, of, a lot of what we see is coercion. A lot of what, what gets done gets done through coercion. And you cannot have leadership without influence, because the research shows that leadership is a, is a relationship of influence. It's a process. And uh, what I'd say about um, Mugabe's style of leadership, as you put it, is that there's really no leadership or little leadership going on, happening there because um, what we see is that there is some sort of influence, but we cannot say it's positive. We cannot say it's influence that gets things done from the hearts and the minds of the people, but more or less through coercion. And if uh, this is the case, then in my own estimation, I'd say... Uh, there's little or no leadership happening there. It's, it's just, um, if you like, he, he's a ruler. That's what he's doing. Okay, let, let me ask you this question I also asked in the studio. Now, Zimbabwe used to be quite prosperous, uh, having a modest, a very quite modest uh, population in the past, in the 80s. Mugabe, uh, Zimbabwe was quite prosperous. But coming to uh, the, the 2000s and so on, Zimbabwe seemed to have lost all of that, and Mugabe was still the president that time. He's still the president now. What's the difference now? Exactly. Again, okay, if we come back to the leadership definition of leadership, a leader should be able to see and know when things are going wrong and fix it. Zimbabwe, as we know, has been on a decline in the past few decades. It's been on a decline. It used to be the food basket of Africa, if I'm correct. And right now, we have queues for bread in Zimbabwe. So what that simply tells, the picture simply tells us that it's not only a failure of leadership, it's the absence of leadership because it's no longer the food basket. That's obvious for all to see. The decline is clear. Things have gone from bad to worse. The, the president himself appears disconnected from the, the people he's supposed to be leading. And so with that disconnect and with the way the situation is, it's, it's as bad as it gets. If you if you know what I mean, mm. it's it's mm. not um, 
if, if things carry on this way, it's not going to improve very soon. Okay. Um, now he... I would like to say his style of leadership is autocratic, but I think it's worse than that. Mm. All right. Now there really he... is no leadership here. Okay. M Mugabe promised to empower Zimbabweans by reclaiming white farms and transferring it to uh, black farmers, as the case may be. And he promised that that was going to right. be a way of improving things, the economy and so on. But we don't seem to see that improvement. What, what do you think went wrong in that aspect? Right. The, 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 the story really is that it wasn't really about empowerment. The story really is that he took land from white farmers and gave it to his cronies, who on, one, on the other hand were not equipped or knowledgeable enough to till the lands he'd, he'd taken or he'd seized from the white farmers and given to his to, to 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 his cronies. So um, be 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 that as it may, as much as we like to dispute or or repudiate this fact, as long as the farmers were in control, the white farmers were in control of those lands. There was productivity at its very best level, and the people of Zimbabwe, and in fact, much of the neighboring states, had a lot to eat. And now, with the land grabbing taken from the white farmers and given to his cronies, what simply happened was a sharing or an allocation of land to cronies. And gradually, farm equipment was sold off, and little or no productivity to, to there was little or no farming taking place because they lacked the knowledge and the skill. And because the entitlement mentality brought about nothing but the land grabbing, there was no, no substance and no foundational knowledge to carry on with the status quo as at the time. So that's where we are in Zimbabwe today. It's, it's not just about getting what, in quote, belongs to me or to mm. our fathers. It's okay. about sustenance and maintaining that status quo at the tempo and at the rate it was, it was going okay. at the time. Uh, all right. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Stay online. We'll come back to you on this again. Now, China is often criticized for not, ha for not engaging fairly with Africa sometimes. But what's your assessment of that? I don't know the business for that criticism. No, we, we, we uh, on international media have yes, said that uh, China it's, doesn't it's, uh, really engage that, Africa fairly. I think, I think that is uh, mm. a propaganda. Right. When the uh, United States was uh, was in Iraq, Afghanistan, mm. you know, uh, spending a lot of money on arms and ammunition, you know, and uh, invaded those countries, yes. China, that had little investment in Africa in 2000, came to Africa. And the, by 2012 figures, China had the, the FDIs, the Foreign Direct Investment of China in Africa, is 198.5 billion, mm. compared to that of the US, which is 108.9 billion. So, and the, uh, uh, by IMF figures, Africa, out of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, seven are from Africa. China took advantage, and they are bringing money, FDI, to Africa. I mean, this figure, and this figure, China, by 2015, by projection, mm. will have had an FDI of 338 billion mm. in Africa, while America is diverging. So whoever says China is not, uh, is not engaging, uh, you know, strategically in Africa, okay. I believe it's not looking at the figures. Okay. All right, we'll come back to this. Now, since 2011, China has signed off more than a billion dollars in loan to Zimbabwe. And like Oliver Twist, the Southern African nation needs more to stand on its feet. Now, despite asking for a billion dollars financial bailout, Mugabe was able to get just $2 billion from his Beijing trip. Now, is China's aid to Africa a monster in disguise or a messiah in actual fact? We'll go on a quick break. And Africa Today will continue. Stay with us. All right, Africa remains at the center of a heated debate about the nature of China's interest and its implications for the, the, the continent, as the case may be. Now, you're still on Africa today. Now, let, let, let's start it this way. African countries generally don't seem to engage with each other much. But from the eye of Zimbabwe, if they see that the other, other countries outside of the continent are not necessarily engaging and they're not getting the best. 
would it have been different if they start engaging African countries that are all, also agrarian like Zimbabwe is? No, I don't understand. The... Now, what I'm saying yes. is, would it have been different if Mugabe decides to engage other African countries, countries. now for the benefit of Zimbabwe? Well, if you watch it, mm. most of the African countries also have dealings with the West. So, and uh, Mugabe is considered a pariah. So if you are, our economy we are dealing with the West and we are not economically independent, I will begin to engage with Mugabe. You will have sanction. You will be sanctioned. So that is the politics. That is a, a social economy politics there. Mm. So and that is why Mugabe turned to China. Because what does he have to offer Africa? He has nothing to offer the rest of Africa, apart from the full basket of Southern Africa, in which is a land-grabbing uh, policy. Um, we uh, fail the country. Mm. So what does he have to offer before other African countries will engage with him? Apart from the political part of it, the social political part of it, the economic part of it. He has nothing to offer Africa. So he turned to China. And even now that China is investing in Zimbabwe, I've gave you the, the percentage is so low. Mm. If the projected investment of China by 2015 is, uh, is going to be 385 billion US dollars, and Zimbabwe is only getting about one billion. So what percentage is that? China is only keeping Zimbabwe because they want to keep Zimbabwe as a traditional friend. Not that, that is, there, there is no real investment. The, even there is no investment in finance sector mm. in Zimbabwe. Okay. It's only in the extractive sector, a minimal investment to keep that friendship. Until this, I mean, even the future, China too is even being careful. Because they don't know what happens to Mugabe tomorrow. Don't forget, he's 90 years old. Mm. He refused to democratize. And there's no succession plan. Except recently that he mentioned the name of his wife. <laughs> to be his, uh, uh, <laughs> to succeed him. Yeah. And, uh, that is not, virtually that is no succession plan. So China too, they are being careful. They don't want to pump so much money. In a country, they are not sure of the future. So the, the plight of Zimbabwe is so unfortunate that to have a man, a grandfather of that nature, that uh, is supposed to bring in the leadership, that will have a succession plan. He's supposed to be an elder statesman. He's still running the affairs of the country okay. the way he likes it. Oh, all right, let, let, let's have uh, v Vanessa on now. Now, Vanessa, what, what does Zimbabwe really need to move forward economically from this point? Leadership. Uh, Zimbabwe needs sound, visionary leadership to move forward. Zimbabwe also needs to reposition itself on the global scene as a country that is willing to be a part of the Committee of Nations. Um, at the moment, we don't have that happening. Um, Zimbabwe has very much been in isolation, which is why they've reached out, or Mugabe has reached out to his, to whom he considers his old ally, China. And um, interestingly, I think China is only looking for, I mean, given the 80% unemployment rate in Zimbabwe, mm. China is only going to, with very minimal investment, exploit what they think might be a viable and cheap labor market in the near future. Um, we talked about succession planning. Uh, there's little, uh, there's zero, uh, I mean, no succession planning happening at the moment. And um, this also might have something to do with the fact that traditionally in Africa, leaders or, or kings have been known to rule for life. Mm. So I think that's what Mugabe has caught on to, the idea that he'd rule for life and then install his wife or his son or whoever, the family member as, mm. as a successor, which is what we have, I mean, traditionally in, in ancient African society, and uh, which is the reason he's refused to democratize. So what Zimbabwe really needs to do now is to, to, to desist from the island mentality. Zimbabwe cannot afford to be an island in the global world. Okay. Zimbabwe has to be part of the global community if it's going to thrive at all. All right, now, but apart from the political leadership you talked about, if we have to narrow it down to economic terms, to the micro or macroeconomic economy, for instance, talking about inflation, talking about employment, if Mugabe has to take those steps now, what would they be to reviving the economy of Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe has, to, Zimbabwe, um, Mugabe has to step down. That's the first thing he has to do. For anybody to take Zimbabwe seriously, Mugabe has to step down. If, he's, if he refuses to step down then, because the brand Mugabe is, is bad. Hmm. 
it, it's bad. So if he's going to, if any steps are going to be taken to revive, in a sense, the economy or the socioeconomic environment in, in, in Zimbabwe, then the brand Mugabe has to be out because there are sanctions from the West and uh, until those some of those sanctions are lifted, he cannot go back to business as usual. He's also isolated himself from the African community. And so I guess if he's going to start at all, he may, the alternative to stepping down might be to begin to reach out to other African leaders. Um, but the thing is, those people, those ones also do not want to be um, tainted with alliances with, with Zimbabwe and Mugabe. So the brand Mugabe really is bad. And it, what Zimbabwe needs now is funding, funding and the lifting of sanctions in order for the economy to, to thrive. And um, the lands he's, he's taking from the white farmers have to be put back to good use, as, as they once were. But um, at the moment, because of the brand Mugabe, uh, nothing is going to happen in the near future until the brand Mugabe really is, is, is done away with. But... All right. Th thank you very much, Dr. Vanessa, for joining us on Africa Today. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Now, she talked about the brand. <laughs> the brand Mugabe can yeah. no longer sell. Yeah. That, that, that's, that was just, yeah. The point is, this, this, is this, this is not about Mugabe anymore. It's about Zimbabweans on the streets and so on. And just like you said, there's no succession plan, which means that in the next four years, as the case may be, Mugabe is still going to be president of Zimbabwe. Let me tell you something. Mm. If Mugabe dies today, there will be a problem in Zimbabwe. Because many people want that position. Right. It, it, there will be confusion. Because 1980 to 2014, mm. no other brand, except that old brand. Mm. You know, Mugan Shangari, under the coalition, tried his best to change the brand. But it was coerced. Seriously coerced. Even to the extent that there was uprising within his own party, exactly. the coalition. Mm. To let you know the person Mugabe. You cannot discuss Zimbabwe today without mentioning Mugabe. So the man is 90 years old. God forbid, if he drops dead today, I can assure you for the next 10 years, there will be a crisis in, in Zimbabwe. The best thing is for Mugabe to democratize and sit back. Let it democratize at his lifetime. Let it set the ball rolling. Let it be keyed in so that the, the country will have a future. So is, you cannot talk about economy of Zimbabwe without talking of uh, Mugabe. As uh, he, rightly she said, mm. the brand is, uh, is no more... Uh, it's, <laughs> it's outdated. <laughs> it's outdated. It's, uh, that is it. It's all right. So in, in, the, in this case, if we have to narrow it down to the issues of isolation, so this is just basically politics that's making people, or ordinary Zimbabweans, suffer for one man's uh, uh, inactions or actions maybe. Well, I, I, I think so. Uh, you see, in every state, in every state, you have a dictator like him, and uh, turning the state to a pariah state. Mm. A lot lies with the citizens of that state. Mm. America, after fighting in Iraq, after what happened in uh, Somalia, we never come to any African country to come and fight for you. You have to take the battle from within. And I think. Uh, Anyway, they tried in uh, Zimbabwe, but they've not done enough. Okay. They've not done enough from within. So if they have done enough, they will have taken the battle to him. So today, Zimbabwe, an average Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe is suffering because one man perpetuated himself in power. He perpetuated himself, and not only that, is if you perpetuate yourself and you have the interest of the country mm. at heart, that will make things easier. We, also, know, we, saw, we saw that kind of situation okay, in Libya, interest. in Libya, exactly. for instance, yes. under Muammar Gaddafi. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And look at what is happening in Libya today. Because Muammar Gaddafi did not democratize. Mm -hmm. he, the, these African leaders sit tight. They are looking at their country as a kingdom. And they are looking at themselves as a king. Mm -hmm. And they are looking at the situation as a monarchy. And uh, it, it, it is a modern world. Mm -hmm. Things are not done that way. People, you must carry people along. Yeah, and even people are more conscious now. Exactly. Uh, but in, in, this, in this case, if you have your way to talk to the average Zimbabweans on the streets generally, what would you tell them? Uh, Finally, that is, Rando. I've said it earlier. Mm. They need to do more. Right. They need to take their destiny in their own hand. They need to face it. There is no nation where people go to sleep and allow, oh, I don't want to die. Oh, I don't want to protest that the nation will prosper. They need to do, they need to do like what Morgan Shangarai did. I think when that one was tired, he sat back. 
He had done everything. Look at the last election in Zimbabwe. Mugabe left the elite in Harare. Nothing happened. There was free a fair election in Harare. He went to the hamlets, to the villages, to the people, to the to those that do not understand what is going on. Mm. To you seen falling back on his old past glory to pick the, the votes. And he's still president of uh, Zimbabwe at the age of 90. Now his, uh, his, his succession plan is his wife, Grace. Let me tell you, if Mugabe drops there today, the fighting will begin for his family. Grace, his wife, his son, other wives, children, they'll start fighting, not to talk of other political interests. So the advice I will give Mugabe himself mm. is to democratize. He should apologize to the nation, apologize to Africa, and democratize Why he's still alive. Thank you very much, Samuel Lisa, for coming thank on you. Africa today. Thank you. And uh, we also thank uh, Dr. Vanessa uh, Iwowo Temewe for joining us uh, from UK earlier on. Now, the last decade has seen a series of summits and trade agreements between Africa leaders and world powers. And if global interest is anything to go by, then Africa is the place to fight for. But beyond strengthening economic ties, many say Africa needs to put its house in order and thoroughly review its role in international affairs to be taken seriously. That's our show for today. Join us next time for another episode. I am Mike Okwache, and remember, this is Africa. Bye for now.